Okay, guys. Okay, I got everything recording now, so everything's a go. Um, if you guys could go ahead and... Okay, so this is DJ Rem, and I got a simple complex on the line. If you guys could kind of go ahead, I guess we'll say go around the car and tell, tell everybody who's there. <laughs> hey, what's up? It's Jeff. Hey, and Adam. My name's Jim. <laughs> and I'm Mark. All right. Okay, so tell, tell me about this gig you guys have tonight. Yeah, we're out here in uh, West Warwick, Rhode Island, playing at uh, Blazes and Billiards. And we're actually sitting out front right now in uh, Mark's Plaza <laughs> and uh, crammed in here uh, talking to you guys for the show. Nice. What uh, kind of venue is that? Is it a pretty big place? or? Uh, it's, it's big with spirits. That's it. There's <laughs> a lot of heart here. Um, <laughs> a little bit small, but that's all right. Well, that makes it easier to pack it, right? Right, exactly. Hey, you know what? I always say when I'm doing my radio show, whether it's one person or a hundred, I don't care, as long as there's one person there to listen to. Hey, man. Hey, hey, man. Hey. Do it because you love it. That's right. 100%, so, 100% no matter how size the, the venue is. Yeah, I want to give a quick shout-out to the guys that bought us down here at Third Hill Vision. They're at a little mass. They are a kick-ass band, and we're glad to be opening for them. Absolutely. Very cool. So what, um, so what do you guys got going on after this? Well, this, this coming weekend is actually pretty packed. We've got a uh, heart, or sorry, we've got a charity event for uh, breast cancer research uh, this coming Thursday. Uh, it's aptly named Beer for Boobs. Beer for Boobs. Beer uh, for Boobs. That's it. going on at the Chad in Manchester, New Hampshire. Uh, then the coming Saturday, we're going to be hitting Willie's Tavern, also in Manchester, uh, for our, our singer's birthday. Should be fun. And then Sunday, another charity event at Mad Bob's. Manchester for uh, a friend of ours. Uh, she's the manager for Mindset X, another local favorite. And uh, we're raising some money for her mother who's dealing with some terminal issues. So yeah, we got a busy weekend coming up. Sounds like yeah, and all for great causes. That's awesome. What we like to do. Yeah, that's awesome. So how long have you guys been together as a band? Well, <laughs> this lineup's been together about a year and a half now, but the band existed before that. Uh, it was different people, but uh, there are, those members are no longer in, and uh, it's a whole new lineup except myself, and uh, since then, things have just been taken off like crazy. We've uh, been on eight top 40 charts on Amazon MP3, we've got to the top of a couple of them, and we've played with Candlebox, and Shine Down, Seven Dust, so, 10 years. The last year is what we're trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, not a, that's not bad gigs to play with, though. Man. No. What, um, so what's the music scene like where you guys are at? No. Uh, well, Manchester, New Hampshire has a awesome local scene. Manch Vegas. Manch Vegas, we call it. Okay. A lot of good bands. Uh, a lot of thrash bands. So, uh... A lot of venues that promote original music. Yep. A lot of hard rock bands, and also a lot of jazz bands, a lot of uh, country bands. A whole, a whole bunch of stuff going on in the Manchester area that's really positive. Okay, cool. What, um, okay, so I have like three of your songs, but I was reading on your uh, your Facebook page that you have, that there's like a previous album, but obviously I'm assuming that previous album was with the old members. Correct. Yes. Okay. We still play a, a fair amount of those songs for the new lineup, though. Okay. When do you expect or plan to record, like, a new album with the whole, with everybody new? Well, this, uh, this new, uh, three song, uh, I guess, uh, uh, EP, we just released is all, uh, original music with the new lineup, and we're actually looking to jump back in the studio, we're talking sometime, the earlier, mid, uh, it's winter. I'll try to get back in and then lay down at least three more. So I'm trying to kind of keep it rolling. But yeah, we've already got those three songs out, and uh, seems have got pretty positive reviews. So we're looking to jump back in and uh, go at it again. Very good. Well, when you when you get to that point, make sure you uh, send those tunes on to Metalhead Radio, please. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Harmony. <laughs> so what uh? What got all, I guess you can kind of go around the, that sounds funny, going around the car again, go around the car and let me know what, um, everybody, uh, what are your musical influences, what got you into music? 
Um, oh, okay, hey, it's Jess again. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I grew up with a lot of classic rock, um, Led Zeppelin, jo uh, what am I trying to say? Janet Joplin. Oh, okay. <laughs> things like that. My dad loved that stuff. Um, but I really love a lot of the early 90s stuff, like Soundgarden, Live, Don't Have the Pilots. Um, and I, I, a lot of the newer stuff is great, Seven Dust Disturbed. Um, but, I mean, a lot of early 90s rock I'm really into because it, it had more of an edge to it, I think, at least for mainstream music anyway. Um, and a lot of the, the girl influences, um, Alanis, Nightwish, Flyleaf, Hailstorm, Cranberry, yeah. Um, even some of the R&B things, um, Janet Jackson, Madonna, pretty much everything. Did you just drop Jewel? I did. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, you're like the serious Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> you're like the pop naked on top of a truck. Uh, I don't like the pop naked on top of a truck. And I'm not ashamed to admit that I like Jewel. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with a wide range of musical taste, that's for sure. <laughs> Uh, Adam, uh, I'd say like every member of this band, I kind of have a wide range of uh, an array of music I listen to and influences. I the night before I actually emailed Mark um, about I uh, went to the strength of something. Mm -hmm. The night before I uh, contacted Mark about joining the band, I saw a documentary. Uh, I don't know if you've seen it. Uh, it might get loud with uh, Jack White and The Edge and uh, um, Jimmy Page. And it was just such an amazing documentary, and I was just, I said, I have to do that. And the next day, uh, email Mark, and uh, here we are a year and a half later. So, I see Jack White right now, or the band was the biggest influence. That's cool. Hey, Jim, uh, what got me into music? It's a uh, kind of a funny story. I got a call from Mark. The phone the book complex pretty much just the day started, in the show and stuff. And he goes, you like that rock band thing, right? Well, bass is kind of like that. You want to learn to play? So I taught myself to play in about two months, and here I am fooling around with these guys. <laughs> um, music influence, pretty much the same as everyone else. Seven Dust, Non Point, uh, Chevelle, Corn, Metallica, 90s Alternative, all that type of stuff. Jewel! <laughs> I don't know about Jewel. I don't know what that was. Oh, you love Jewel. Uh, so long as you're naked on a truck. That's about it. <laughs> Um, in terms of uh, listening to music, I actually didn't start about any of that until I was 12 or 13, sometime in middle school. Uh, my best friend got me into Lincoln Park and Lake Biscuit and all of those. That was kind of my early childhood stuff. Just, you know, whatever got me jumping around and, you know, pretending to be angry like those teenage kids do. <laughs> um, right. I actually started drumming uh, shortly after the Rock Band video game came out. <laughs> I, you know, I ended up being really good at it and I was like, hey, maybe I can do this for real. I just was listening to them the other night, actually. <laughs> I had an Easy E song stuck in my head all day today. <laughs> uh, love it. And he loves Lady Gaga. Let me oh, know. Wow, that <laughs> is my hero. Right, I'm going to roll down the window of you. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, she's very good at theatrics, anyways. We will not jump on the trend of covering a Lady Gaga band. He 
even with guns to our head. Well, yeah. I, I, I know. As soon as you do that, you sold your soul. Wait, is it, so we get everybody. I lost track. Lost count. That's it. All five. Okay. What, um... I think right now. That's good, though. What do you guys think of the whole music industry these days? I mean, obviously it's changed, like, it's done, like, a 180-degree turn since, like, <laughs> 10, 15 years ago, so... Uh, I think for, uh, for us, at least, we try to keep it simple. You know, we, uh... So we've all got jobs, you know, we're not getting necessarily paid our, our millions yet. Uh, we just do it because we love it. Um, we, we don't play cover tunes because we like the creative process, and um, we've all really melded real well together. We um, usually well together, I think. <laughs> um, and it's just been a lot of fun. So keeping it simple, you know, we don't worry about, you know, we, we like, you know, getting on the radio, and we like selling, you know, the discs, but it's just about getting out here and doing what we're doing tonight, cramming in a Mazda, and... You know, <laughs> heading to the gig and, and rocking out, whether it's, you know, like you said earlier, one or, you know, one person or a thousand people. It's always fun. So. What, uh. Anybody, <laughs> <pretty solid>. uh <laughs> I was going to say, anybody have anything else to add to that? <laughs> um, well, we love any label that wants to sign us with a fair contract, but outside of that, um, we're pretty skeptical. We don't want someone else to own our money to scoop out the foundation we're building out from underneath us, underneath us and, and own it and then us get left with nothing. Uh, I was reading recently about Candlebox we played with. They weren't even allowed to use their own band name because of legal obligations under contracts with labels and publishing companies. And we're not interested in, in getting screwed over, basically. There's a fair contract. If someone just says, hey, you guys are great and we want to take it to the next level and partner work with you, that's excellent. We're looking for people who can do some promotion and management and booking and, and you know, worldwide distribution, which is great. Something I've run into when a band is really big, and, you know, and that doesn't mean I don't like them, but, and they have this record label deal, and um, I, I won't call it the record label, even though I'd like to, because it's really irritating to me, but I had this band, it's got a big record label. I uh, wanted, he was like, hey, you know what, I like to talk to these guys, I like to listen to them. The, the, the dude from the label wouldn't give me the time of day. And I'm like, seriously? Just want to help promote your band. And so that's kind of the bad taste I have as a fan, I guess I should say. Yeah, that's, that's one of the things is, if we were to sign with someone, we would never want to cut our roots, we would never want to stop it from being a grassroots, word of mouth type of um, spreading. You know, no one's good, no one's too high and mighty for anyone else. Well, you know, and it's, and I get that, because w without the uh, submission to Metalhead Radio, I, I hadn't heard of you guys, and now I have, and I really like you, and now it's, you know, for me, it's now to, to help spread the word and get in, and let other people hear your music, that's what it's about for me, so, you know, and if you don't do, if you guys would have made that initial step to, uh, you know, send out some tunes to the radio station, uh, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Yeah, hey, we appreciate your end of it, too. You know, we'd, we'd be playing for nobody if it wasn't for, you know, guys like you who help, you know, push the music, so. Well, thank you. Thank yeah, you. thank you so much. Yeah. And um, the other thing, too, is even if we take off huge and we're selling out teams around the world, you're still going to get this phone call in five, ten years from us. Guaranteed, uh, because we know the people that put us there. We know the people that care about music. And if you love music and you like this band, you know, you're one of us. I cannot tell you how many times bands tell me that when I talk to them. And that's, it means a lot. So thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. So when you guys, uh, when you guys say, for, I guess we'll, we'll say, for example, like these last three songs, it's, that's everybody in the new group, you know, how did you guys write those songs? Is, it, is there one person that does the writing and then everybody just kind of collaborates after? How do you guys go about that? In the, uh, in the old lineup, it was 99% myself, it's Mark, uh, and I found a fan, and I did just about everything on that album. I did all 10 songs, I did all the lyrics on them, but as this new lineup has worked out really well, uh, everyone is contributing now. Uh, the three songs that you have were musically written before these other members had joined, 
but they contributed to them and they turned them into to what they are because they were just kind of notes on a piece of paper originally. But as we move forward and more discs come out, you're going to see that some of the songs will be written entirely by other members, and it's a more collaborative effort as well. That's, that's one of the things that I think is crucial and one of the reasons why this lineup is doing so well. Victimized, which is the second song. Second song? Yep. Of the, the new EP. Uh, it's actually the first uh, lyrics written by somebody else in Mark, I believe, right? That's, those are You're correct. Lyrics, so. Yeah, Chris, the drummer, wrote the lyrics on Victimized. That's the first officially released song that wasn't just me doing all the work. No, so it's great. And, and, and it's worked out excellent. They're, they're great lyrics. They're very powerful. Had a nice little writing retreat in Spain. Yeah. Went <laughs> to the house and uh, moved all the furniture off to the side <laughs> and uh, blasted the windows out pretty much, just walking through the night and the day as a, as a big uh, weekend writing session. And uh, it was very fruitful. We went into the studio shortly afterwards. Ah, oh, that's awesome. So how often do you guys um, t- get together and practice? Once a week right now, uh, Thursday night, you know, a couple hours, go over what's going, coming up, playing the song. Right now we're uh, practicing for an acoustic set, opening up for a chef's team, we can work on that lately. Oh, that'd be cool. Are you guys going to have somebody record that when you do it? Well, that's an excellent idea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think Jim is going to try. There you go. Let's go wires. I'll make it work. <laughs> or Bluetooth. Or Bluetooth, yeah. Or Wi-Fi or anything else. Just park the car by the door. You'll pick it up. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Part about being in the band is that you've got five really cool musicians, but then Jim, you know, he, he's our tech guy, and you know, everybody's kind of got their role. So we're like, we're like a whole crew meshing with just five people. Yeah, no, no rubbing, no issues. We just all think together and no rubbing. So maybe, maybe later. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, everyone just gets along. You know, there's no attitudes, no nothing. It just works. It's actually pretty amazing. Well, that's good because obviously, in order to have any longevity, you definitely have to work as a team and get and get along. So. Mm-hmm. I think we've all slept in the same bed together, right? That one time. <laughs> I know we've all shared one hotel room. Oh, God, never again. <laughs> we didn't think much, but uh, we had a good time. My stomach still hurts from laughing. <laughs> oh, okay, well, anyways, the reason I asked about the acoustic stuff is if you if you do record it somehow and it turns out decent, send it to me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I will do. We're not sending you the basement uh, recording. <laughs> we made of our acoustic because they're a nightmare. But uh, if, we, if we get a good polished recording where we didn't screw up every song multiple times, we will definitely send it on to you. Right. What, um, okay, so when you guys do play, what's your, for you guys, what's your favorite song to perform? I mean, if you have a favorite. You can each try to pick one, I guess. Head or Victimize for me, one of those two. Jim goes with head or victimize. Yeah. I uh, I love um, voice just because it's such a you know like expressive song. Like that, it's, it's like bringing a uh, simple complex sound to like the next level. Uh, I, I love. I yeah, you guys know that one. I love voice as well. That's my new favorite to play out. Um, I did victimize some of the older ones. Um, Severance. Severance is definitely a favorite. Just kill them on Severance. Yeah. <laughs> um, I I can't say that I really got a favorite. Um, what kind? Uh, well, <laughs> uh, I usually whenever I end up trying to add something to a new piece of music, uh, I love trying to get a nice heavy blast section to the song. Um, and you know anything that lets me work the double bass nicely. Um, and we got a few songs like that that you know give give us a nice bump to it. So. But, you know, it's a little too hard to pick out of all of those for me. <laughs> oh, and, and for me, Mark, um, the first time I played, and we actually got together and, and played Look What You Left Behind and made it through without any errors in the song in the balls, I, I actually got chills at just um, thinking how powerful it was lyrically for me and how the music just came together so well that uh, I think if we're going to have a mainstream hit, that's going to be the one. I think that's our ticket to start, and we can just get people to hear it more. <laughs> well, they'll hear it on Metalhead Radio. How's that? All right. Well, <laughs> not total metal, but hey, 
we love that you're going to play it anyway. Uh, that's okay. You know what? We, we have a we have a saying at Metalhead Radio. It's if if it's good, we play it. <laughs> we it rocks. It, it doesn't really. We really try to keep from genreizing songs or, or bands. I guess you should say it. It really irritates me when people get so hung up on what genre music is, and, and they're like. Well, I don't listen to that because it's not the right genre. I'm like, really? It doesn't matter if it sounds good. That's all that matters. Totally. Yeah, agreed. So, yeah. So whether it's hard rock or metal or whatever, I, I have actually quite a few bands that are hard rock. They throw a little screamo in once in a while, and I'm like, eh, that's good. Excellent. Good enough. Totally. So what, um... Okay, so is there, let's, let's give you, this is your chance to plug now. I do have a couple more questions, but we'll get, get this plug out of the way. Where can people buy this if they want to, after they listen on the, after they listen to the interview, and they listen to me play the tunes, where can they go and buy these songs? You can have our main page, simplecomplex.com, which is everywhere you need to go. Uh, it's on iTunes, Amazon, CD Baby, come to a show, or tell you a CD for three bucks. have any merchandise you're selling? Uh, t-shirts. Not too much more beyond that. Um, for now. For now, you know, looking at typical stuff, shot glasses, koozies, coasters, keychains, <laughs> baseball bat songs. Uh, don't worry, girls, we're working on t-shirts for that, too. Claws. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever we feel like doing. <laughs> so, is that stuff they can buy through your website, or do they have to go to a show to buy that the t-shirts right now? Pretty much a show only right now. Okay. Send us an email. More happy shipping one out to you. Oh, we even sign it for free. Nice. What um? I'm trying to think, there was a I had a question in my brain, and now I can't. Now I, I have totally lost what I was going to ask you guys. <laughs> totally lost. It'll come back. How do you? How did you? Now this goes back to the. This doesn't involve everybody, unfortunately. This question, but how did how did the band name come up? How did it come to be? How to simple, who, who decided a simple complex was a name for this band? Well, the person who uh, co-founded the band with me back in the day um, had sent me an email saying, hey, I was thinking to use the name of Simple Complex. And the strange thing was I had a notepad of potential names on there, and I had written a Simple Complex on it as well. So, very coincidence. Oh, wow. I both like that name. That's right? what started. Yeah. Cool. Okay, I remember the question. Where did you guys record? Where did you guys? Where did you guys record? Did you record everything yourself? Uh, no, actually, we found uh, Joe Merrick, who works his own uh, place called Guilty Dog Studio. He's down in, uh, I believe, it was Hanover, Massachusetts. Hanover, yeah. 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 Massachusetts. Sorry, um, but yeah, he's got he's got a little like a mini house behind his, his main one uh, that he's got completely rigged up with all of the equipment to do that kind of thing. And so uh, we found him online, compared him with a couple other people, and thought that he was our best bet, you know, money-wise and quality-wise. And so uh, we spent uh, three different Saturdays uh, going out to visit him for, you know, for pretty much like 10-hour sessions. Uh, he got everything done for us, and, you know, pretty good budget as far as we, were, we thought. And uh, we're really happy with how it came out. Very cool. Well, it, I mean, it, everything sounds really good. Are you guys planning on probably using him some more then? Okay. Yeah, that's most likely the case, uh, especially, you know, since we've already got it in with him. He seems to really like working with us, so uh, we're, we're definitely thinking about uh, contacting him again in the next few weeks and uh, see if we can get something done over the winter. Very cool. So, anything else you'd like my Metalhead Radio, our Metalhead Radio listeners to know about you guys? Thanks for listening. Keep tuning in. I've been tuning in all week long. Great station, a lot of variety, everything from... Aerosmith and Nirvana all the way up to, you know, Carcass and Death Angel. If you like heavy stuff, this is a great station. Absolutely. Yeah, and you should have heard a lot of stuff you've never heard before, too. That's it. I, I've, I've been in the chat room a few times and heard a few bands come on and said, who is this? Because it's a great song. And they're an unsigned band, and I'm looking them up on Amazon and I'm buying the MP3. It's great. Uh, Planet Nine was the last band I heard on there and said, wow, this is good. Planet Nine is not to get off on Planet Nine, but Planet Nine is awesome. I interviewed them a couple weeks ago. Those guys are, they're just killer. they really, really great group of guys, and 
they, you know, definitely not metal, definitely that hard rock sound, but I, I kind of told them I thought they, w- when I hear them and when I play them on my show, I play them with Black Label Society. That's kind of where I rank them and for my personal taste. Yep, a good match. So, okay, I got one last thing to ask you guys, if you could make me a couple radio tags. Sure. So, if you guys can make one that says, you know, this is a simple complex and you're listening to MetalheadRadio.com, and then one that says the same thing, but you're listening to DJ Rem at MetalheadRadio.com. Sure, all at the same time. Are all at the same time, or take lines, or? No, I, I would like to just hear you all do it together. Alright, this is Complex and you're listening to Metalhead Radio. Ready? Ready? One, two, three. This is a simple complex and you're listening to Metalhead Radio! Nice. I like that little last part. That was awesome. Now the same thing except this is a simple complex and you're listening to DJ Ram on Metalhead Radio. Yes. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. This is a simple complex, and you're listening to DJ Ram on Metalhead Radio! Nice. From the Mazda. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys. Well, thanks for taking the time. Have a great show tonight. And I will, um... Let me see. I believe... I believe this is replaying, actually, this coming Tuesday. I think that's when this. I have this one set. Just hang tight real quick, and I'll tell you the date for sure. Pretty sure that's the date, though. play the interview back, I'll play the tunes you sent me, and then probably like on Wednesday I'll podcast it, and then I'll, I'll post it all over the place on your on your Facebook and all over the place, and I'll email it to you too. Very cool. Um, starting, I think, on Monday, we'll start promoting the hell out of it. Yep. Sounds great. Awesome, dude. Thank you so much. Yep. Thank you. You guys have a great night. Like I said, have a good show, and take care. Thanks, man. Bye. Yep. Bye.